nuances with regard to how the characters emote like the breathing you know the pauses the smile you know the sound of smile so these are all things that you are very particular on i think there is no free will and this this thing this thought no, is like <laughs> there is free will it's just that free will is also dependent on other factors you are made to believe that you should be the protector of the family it's not necessarily the case i wanted to show that this couple loves each other slightly unconventionally which is to show them fighting that's how i wanted to establish that you know the moment you see them fighting it should come across like okay these two people are love are in love when i'm preparing for shoot i always when i'm starting the scene i always have a you know a landing shot like an opening shot and an ending shot and i know how the scene should start and how the scene should end and my screenplay is very very edit heavy andarki namaskaram maro kotta special episode ki swagatham so ivaldi special episode lo maato paatu sapta sagara dashe lo side a or sapta sagara lo dati side a director hemant rao garnaru so aina maato సినిమా గురించి చాలా విస్తారంగా మాట్లాడినారు అంటే అంతకుముందు ఇంటర్వ్యూస్లో మాట్లాడిన విషయాలే కాకుండా కొత్త విషయాలు అడగడానికి ప్రయత్నించాం అనమాట మేము వేసిన ప్రశ్నలకి ఇంకా కొంచెం ఓపికతోనే ఆన్సర్ ఇచ్చినారు అంతకుముందు ఆర్ అంతకుముందు వచ్చిన స్పెషల్ ఎపిసోడ్ విత్ నితిన్ కృష్ణమూర్తి అది మీరు చూస్తుంటే అందులో కూడా మీకు తెలుస్తుంది అనమాట కొంచెం రష్ చేసినాం ఎందుకంటే టైం లేకపోవడం వల్ల ఈయనతో కూడా కొంచెం టైం కుదరలేదు ఆయన అప్పటికీ ఇంకా సప్తసాగర దశల్లో సైడ్ బి వస్తుంది యాక్చువల్లీ వాచ్అట్ ఫర్ దాట్ సో ఆ పోస్ట్ ప్రొడక్షన్ పనులలో ఉండిపోయి చాలా తక్కువ టైం ఇచ్చారు సో ఉన్న టైంలోనే మేము అడిగిన వాడిని అడిగాం అనమాట అండ్ హోప్ఫుల్లీ సైడ్ బి వచ్చిన తర్వాత కూడా ఆ సినిమా చూసి మళ్ళీ ఒకసారి పిలవడానికి ప్రయత్నిస్తాము మీరైతే మొత్తం చూడండి వినండి హ్యాపీ లిస్నింగ్ అందరికి నమస్కారం సో టుడే దిస్ ఇస్ అనదర్ స్పెషల్ డిస్కషన్ విత్ అనదర్ స్పెషల్ ఫిల్మ్ మేకర్ హేమంత్ రావు who did Sapta Sagar Yellow or Sapta Sagar Alu Dhaate in Telugu, uh, starring Rakshit Chetty and Rukmini Vasan. Uh, so thanks, Heyman, for accepting our invite and coming on to the podcast. My pleasure. Uh, so let me tell you my experience. So uh, I was quite busy when the film got released. So in, it got released in Kannada for a, like three or three, four shows in Hyderabad. So I, I went to the movie when... like it was the last day that the movie was leaving uh, hyderabad uh, the, the next the following friday the telugu version was being released no no like one week after that so i i uh, i found some time like i was very busy work wise so i did not find time and uh, i was so after watching the movie i was like very in a very zen like space I, i came out i was in a very zen like space but last 30 minutes of the movie for me personally it felt like an orchestra like you it felt like you designed every piece like the editing the music so that is that that was my biggest takeaway that i saw an orchestra for 30 minutes and i was not able to digest it and then uh, like the uh, after 2 3 days i think the film really hit me i uh, and i felt uh, like after watching a love story i probably got scared for the first time and let me I, i'll elaborate on the on that thought also uh, and then the film got released again in telugu so i i went again like in telugu i went again and uh, so for when when i was watching for the first time both me and my friend like we, like in the second half i always had this fear that one of the characters is going to die i don't know why like whether in the jail or or uh, priya i thought someone is going to die i always had this fear so it was actually a sigh of relief when priya doesn't fall off that building and you cut to that uh, marriage shot uh, okay at least he's not killing somebody that is what i actually thought until that point i was like okay he's going to kill he's going to kill and, and for some reason i i fell in love like i did not want the characters to die but because and i don't know why my brain did not function but i did not until that point like until that point i did not realize that side b is the second part of the movie like i, I did not see any trailer or promotion material nothing i saw mm. uh, so may, for some reason i the, the that that fear of one of the characters lead characters getting killed was very real for the first time so f- while i was watching the second time i was actually very laid back i was like okay the characters won't die and like the 30 minutes i, I still felt the same like uh, like it's an orchestra like there is a conductor doing this and all the pieces are falling in place that is what i i felt 
for the last like, few minutes. So, yeah, so I really like the movie. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. right. So uh, I'll just uh, wrap it up, wrap my uh, opinion of it in short while. So, uh, of, I mean, uh, because uh, Sandy actually mentioned before recording that I stay in Germany, so there is no proper release of Indian films in, at all in here. So we we hardly get any film release here. So we have to wait for OTT most of the time. So uh, the the hype was very much uh, evident throughout social media when when the Kannada when the Kannada version released and got. It got great traction and when the Telugu version released. So all of that was happening on social media and I was trying to stay away from all kinds of spoilers, like uh, staying away from all kinds of tra- teasers and trailers. And I waited for the OTT release. And the moment I, the after I finished watching it, uh, how Sandy described his experience to be Zen. So for me, uh, the film the film ended, but uh, it was somehow staying with me and I did not know what to feel about it. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, I don't. I don't know if it would, if this would this would make any sense, but there was no pointer towards anything like that. Uh, like, is, is this is how you are going to feel? This is how you should be feeling. I did not have any any such pointers from from what I had just seen for two hours twenty minutes, and slowly it started. The feeling started seeping in, and and only after my second second watch of second I, second time I watched it in Telugu, first time I watched it in Canada, and. After I watched it in Telugu and after listening to the Telugu album for for a week or for a week week and half on loop, I really 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 imbibed the whole film uh, into into my veins sort of. So it it that that uh, feeling was the the feeling was uh, with me for like and and kudos to the Telugu lyricists uh, the, the lyricist duo who, who who did work on the Telugu songs uh, actually. I, I mean, I'm I'm not sure uh, how much you were involved in deciding what kind of lyrics should be going in for the Telugu album, but uh, the the work the work they did was fantastic because they they actually captured the emotions and the story very well is what I thought, and I mean like I have th- we have this fond of lyrics we we try to break down lyrics and like we are very interested in songs and all so because songs are uh, what is it. Uh, abridged versions of a lot of emotions into a two minute and three minute and five minute uh, episodes, right? Usually like, and even you splice your screenplay in such a way when, when great seminal moments are happening in, in the screenplay, you bring in your orchestra and you start going, you know, you, you do your stuff. So I, I really appreciated that aspect. And uh, like the moment I finished watching it and soon after we, we tried to contact you and, and, now we are here so thank you for uh, accepting the, our invite and coming on to the podcast so yeah that's that's about it oh, my my pleasure i uh, i'm very glad that uh, you know the i've heard it from uh, a few uh, quite a few people about the uh, um, the dubbing quality and the lyrics and i think the massive credit has to go to uh, you know my uh, lyricist called nagarjun who basically worked on all the Telugu translations. He was sort of in charge. He's the he's also the lyricist who wrote Kadalanu in uh, Kannada. And uh, he's a very accomplished uh, writer here, uh, lyricist here. So he was sort of overseeing this, uh, you know. Uh, I, of course, sat for all the Kannada lyrics. and uh, But Telugu is not my forte. So I, And Nagarjun can speak both Telugu and Kannada. Right. So I sort of discussed the lyrics with Nagarjun and he sort of took the initiative and really, you know, uh, paid the special interest and uh, worked on the lyrics with the Telugu writers. And, and it's, it's, it's very nice because we are trying, you know, dubbing the film uh, uh, is, a, is a very important uh, aspect. I'm just trying to pull up the name so that I don't miss out on all the people that I want to, uh, you know, credit for the Telugu. Just give me a second, sorry. Yeah. Sure. Do. Yeah, so uh, everybody involved with the dubbing, you know, it's it's usually a lot is lost in translation when you dub a film and especially in the pan-Indian. So I, uh, I keep, so when we decided to dub the film in several languages, I sort of generally checked the dubbing versions of other films that have released 
and when i see the kannada version i can tell as a viewer that i'm not happy i'm not i can see that the, there is a lack of detailing in terms of nuances with regard to how the characters emote like the breathing you know the pauses the smile you know the sound of smile so these are all things that we were very particular on and uh, uh, the dubbing engineer the guy who was in charge of it mr vijay kumar ken vijay kumar he's he, he's done a fabulous job and of course the lyricist lyrics especially with the you know the telugu uh, purnachari i think is is a very accomplished uh, lyricist in in telugu and uh, but but I, i hope i'm pronouncing this properly but to vijay kumar and dinesh kakarla are the three lyricists who worked on the telugu version and uh, they they did a really uh, you know fabulous job uh, it's 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 really nice to here native tamil i mean telugu speakers say that you know they've they've done justice so it's it's nice i'll compliment them for sure on your behalf please please do please do they they yeah. did a fabulous job yeah so yeah, yeah so i i'll expand on the thought like why i felt scared is because i'm curious actually i wanted to know why why you said that it's a slightly unusual response for a yeah, yeah. story so uh, so i think this question has been asked multiple times like why uh, why manu will in a rational mind my why manu will take the decision to go to jail uh, but I, i i i placed myself in manu's position and i thought that was a very rational decision because he wants to put and put settle down according to societal norms and i placed myself at every crucial juncture of the story like with every character let's say priya's character or manu's character or achut achut sir's character right everyone is trying like at that point with the with, with their circumstances with whatever you have shown i think that they are trying to take a practical decision so the feeling that i got out of it is uh like i like i'll think at that point of time i'll take the best decision with the, with the knowledge i have or with the information i have but at the end of the day still my life can get fucked <laughs> like uh, and that thought is very scary right like with 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 the whatever information with the free will that you have you are thinking that your life will be in a certain path but it might not be right it it's very real in case of manus and priya's instance and why i felt it with this particular movie is because the decisions are very practical like, like you can actually like very logical you can actually understand why characters it's not like they are emotional and they took their decision in haste you can actually in the film itself you can reason out why they why priya or manu have taken and how their bonding between each other has helped them each other to take that decision like you can actually see all of that so when when, when you when you see all of this i i thought okay whatever you you might do your life can can go in a certain direction that you might not choose to um so basically say basically saying that i i i think there is no free will and this this like this thought no, is like <laughs> there is free will it's just that free will is also dependent on other factors there is you you i am choosing to be in this interview so there is nobody is it's not it's not fate is not destined you know me to be right. here right? or it's not that you know we don't have choice we have choice but uh everybody else also has a choice right when you're crossing the road your choice is to cross the road just as it is the driver's choice to speed at that point of time and be reckless so there is a certain which is why i find the whole you know i've always i mean a slightly philosophical note i feel truth always exists in physics uh, in, in in the way the world is you know the, there is a certain law of the world and uh, you know there's this there's this thing when i was i mean i was i'm not a very studious guy but i love physics i love conceptually the idea of physics because i feel it is the uh, blueprint of the gods if if I, if i can say so uh, it's like the rules of the world in a way so if you look at like heisenberg's uncertainty principle there he says that you know that if you're if a, if a particle is uh, I'm, i'm just sort of uh, paraphrasing it but if if a particle is just stationary the chances of it colliding with another particle is very low because mm. 
particle is not moving but if another particle is moving then there are multiple particle particles moving then this there is a certain element of chaos that happens and so yeah i mean coming back to free will i think i get what you mean it's scary you know it's like it like one sing one single thing can bring the entire building down and yeah that's how fragile life is and that is i mean that is what i was trying to examine and it's a very tragic thing that one small thing can really you know bring everything down yeah. and it is indeed a scary thought but it is not i mean it's it, it hopefully makes you hopefully makes you want to live in the moment and while you think yeah. around you a little more you know yeah so the uh, yeah so so one other thought that it's i would like it's it's very interesting that that's what you took out of the film because <laughs> i i mean that uh, that is not what i was <laughs> you know no, no, i i can explain actually so uh, so in general i'm like very i'm a very very sober guy like i don't get excited for stuff so i uh, so love stories are generally not my forte i don't enjoy like i enjoy drama but i i don't en- enjoy this tragic kind of love stories but contrary i, I enjoyed a lot and like th- mm. it, it kept on uh for some reason it, it kept on like something was bugging in my mind and it still actually i was thinking yesterday or day before yesterday also uh on like like as i said earlier each character is trying to make a decision on his or her information like they have right correct but but as has like as humans we say that we also need to have like we we also have some morals principles but here we see that the all the characters are motivated let's say like achut sir character he is motivated like god he is looking for that upward mobility or or to the next level correct you also see that in manush character only like except priya who is like like living yeah. in the moment with like with emotions all of them are actually looking for that so there there, there are no core so values yeah. core morals you only see that with priya so why is that yeah. written into the screen pillar because see uh... the uh, i i suppose i i mean i didn't i didn't write it like backwards like okay i want to center priya as somebody right. who is very you know she also has desires but her desires are very uh, you know in kannada there is a saying haske idashte kal chaastare charge beku which is basically you stretch as much as possible to the length of the bed you know don't don't you know uh sleep comfortably in what you have is basically is is how she is brought up and how she looks at life but i think manu right. specifically is you know when you when you likes when you love somebody the tendency is to go above and beyond for them right, right. you want to make sure that you give them it's like which is why if you if you look at if you examine society there are people who work I, i and it's true with my parents i'm sure it's true with many of our parents where they have worked for years without taking a break just so that they can provide a better life for us it's it's it's, it's like exceptional love right it's like a very uh, it's like unrealistic almost they don't have to they can provide bare minimum and say you know what you fend for yourself but they always go that extra step because they want to do better for you right it's a very protective sort of instinct and for manu as well the reason why he is doing it is because he loves her so much the decision that he takes the, the decision of going through that short window in his head of whatever difficulty he has to go through is is it seems like a very rational thing for him because of the fact that he thinks that the other end there is a better life for priya so mm. you know that it's a very it's a very human sort of a thing the way i look at it that is why you know i i was able to make manu re- relatable that way and priya isn't that way because priya is has already got what she wants in a way like she sees you know she sees the happiness is within grasp so it's it's not a right. she's ready she's she's more worried about everyday stuff you know like make sure that uh, you know uh, yeah. uh, 
he doesn't he doesn't uh, you know like things like i hope he takes care good care of his health health you know like i hope he sleeps enough and he doesn't you know smoke or drink and you know those are the kind of worry spectrum that she has mm-hmm. his is a slightly more like you know unnecessarily overprotective sort of a thing exactly manu so does societal pressures also play on manu like he has to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it is a it is a, it is a gender stereotype right in the sense that you are you are raised from a very young age to believe to sort of to made you are made to believe that you should be the protector of the family it's not necessarily the case it sh- it shouldn't be that way and it is being examined today and i think that's a good thing and those things need to be rewritten over time and but it doesn't remove the fact that even for me who comes from an educated background i grew up with that mindset and only now when i look at it like only after like reaching a certain age i am when i question things around me i was like it doesn't have to be that way you know both people both people are adults in a relationship and they then have to hmm. you know create a life together and sort of fight for that life together there is no uh, you know there are no the stereotypes don't necessarily have to exist right uh, yeah i understand right. uh, just one more right. point before i let me hmm. talk uh, so in the lyrics in the telugu lyrics uh, in the first the, 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 the title track and the uh, the track where she sings uh so kadalini like both of these contain like uh, the references to ocean and she trying to get to the ocean like get to reach the ocean but somehow there is some gap so that thing is clearly captured in the telugu lyrics in, the, in those two songs uh so actually that metaphor i wasn't able to understand like directly from the movie but through the lyrics only i i picked those up so again kudos to uh, telugu lyrics <laughs> right uh so uh, my like from, from whatever you have spoken until now so you re- you reflect that in that uh, this, this the scene in the second half where uh, patel i think his name is patel right the character name he's he's explaining to manu how a, a small mistake can put a, lot, a dent on the on the v on the threads right and you you use that to open the film so when i was watching for the first time i i i was very impressed with the opening sequence because it is like the like the shots are very you know uh, uh, the focus is like right on on very small portions and like a, it it is uh, it is exploring how the weaving uh, the, the thread weaving or whatever it's called that works and and i forgot about that and when it when it came on when when that scene appears in the second half i was like oh this is this is insane so this is is very very good way of opening it so it, that was my dopamine hit but the my, my point is uh the characteristics of manu and the characteristics of priya and foreshadowing all of this actually happens in the opening scene so the opening scene where he's zooming away in high speed in a car so thinking in his head in that that the, the accelerator and pedal are right in right below his legs there's there's a gear rod in his hand the steering in his is in hand and like he's so confident that things will go according to his plan and he's not he doesn't even care that there might be an ac- there might be an accident out of nowhere it, it only takes a millisecond but priya is that rational person at that moment asking him to slow down and think properly so he's so that uh, uh, and the, the the whole scene until that until that day ends and he goes back to his home the whole scene actually establishes the character the characteristics there is foreshadowing in it so i was i was simply blown when i was when i was watching for the second time and I actually realized it oh there is everything here he has actually placed everything here he is actually taking the whole story here so how did that happen like how much how much how many iterations did you write and think about opening the film no there, this? there was no iteration that was the first scene that i wrote as in it was <laughs> the first the it, it sort of flowed organically the thing that i was very sure of is uh, about opening the film uh I, I, in fact it was it, it just happened organically i know a lot of people have spoken about it and i have also like why are so many people talking about this but you know when you're writing sometimes it just happens it's just organic but the thing the when i examine the thought process the thing that i remember wanting to do is i want i wanted to start the introduction of the couple through a fight like between 
a conflict because there's a very interesting thing that happens when a couple fights there's a love language to the way they fight you can tell how much somebody loves another person in the way they fight uh you know because fights between couple can be extremely bitter can be extremely ugly but can also you know the uh, some fights can indicate just love between two people right and fights between two people can also establish contra- contradictory point of views and world views like how somebody looks at the world and how another person looks at the world and how that can be the counter that can be the reason for the fight so right. i wanted to show that this couple loves each other slightly unconventionally which is to show them fighting that's how i wanted to establish that you know the moment you see them fighting it should come across like okay these two people are love are in love right right so right. that's that was my that was my approach and that's how i wrote the scene once i started writing the scene all the other elements of the different point of views like he has a different point of view she has a different point of view so those different point of views sort of started you know coming across and then that is what sort of built the scene uh, so the main point was the conflict i wanted to start with the fight right right, right. so it it is, is, it is very this... clear in his face as well right like he's like uh, when when she when she when she, when he is counter arguing and like, there in argument she says you you uh, earn so and so money and he is very agonized when the truth is put on his face like he doesn't yeah. like to face truth he doesn't like to face the real world like, i think that's what i took away and eventually that also no, that's I what think, happened no i think like, i think i think the nuance yeah. of performance there is really nice uh, because rakshit's reaction when she says that you earn like a guy doesn't like to hear that right <laughs> when somebody and uh, when anybody says you are the only this much it's a very uh, it's a very uh, it's Locking like down. a salt on the wound uh, salt <laughs> on the wound type of a feeling so uh, yeah I, i i think what he did in the way he expresses himself was really fabulous true 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 yeah i think there is well. one more scene where this 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 fighters and cute women are shown as well he goes to kishan and he he wantedly teases her saying that i just want five uh, five special meals in a week uh, then he says like she says that there is a cook in my my street whose husband has ran away so then he then he like he like he pushes her uh, saying that okay can do, do you have a photo like he knows that she she gets pissed off when he says that but he he wantedly says that uh, so that like yeah. that, I, yeah. i i i wanted i wanted to you know slightly be are slightly unconventional in the sense of showing that manu is manu and priya are not sort of are very progressive in their own way you know it's the gender roles that they have uh, is slightly is slightly unconventional where she doesn't expect to be the cook for him and he also knows that like i wanted to sort of you know bring that but still he's still a victim of the gender stereotypes of wanting to be protected you know to the to the uh, over in the family and sort of take care of the future and you know those kind of things right i mean uh, that, that i mean that that's also one of the gra- greatest driving factor for him right so he has to be protective and also he takes uh actually when you zoom out and see that's actually a stupid decision that he takes but for him at that moment it it might seem rational right yeah. going to jail and yeah. probably earning that lump sum money in in a single go so that he can buy that uh, place for themselves so that that and uh, again the opening scene as well because uh, there there are two great payoffs in that scene right so you because the zooming the car zooming away in in in, like in lightning speed and all that is paid off at that uh, 25th or 30th minute where you see the car the 21st yeah <laughs> and and uh, priya not in priya uh, and he 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 just asked priya to sing start singing out of random and she says i'm not in the mood and i'm not a radio station to sing whenever you want so this is this becomes very seminal for th- for that big decision that he that she takes and when when uh, priya's mother comes and begs of him saying that she's not singing she has left everything she has becoming she is becoming you but there is no jail outside so that these two payoffs were actually very so when i kept thinking about the first scene all those layers started to come coming to me so like 
so it's it's very great that you actually thought of this in the first go and wrote it down so yeah good to that yeah so uh, i think this a lot of people have spoken but i'll just put it across like there is clearly a like upward mobility point of view coming inside the film whether it is manu's character or achitana's character uh, so they are they are looking upwards like they want to go a, a level socially a level upward <coughs> Uh, and that is clearly established in the movie like that is that is what their driving factor is uh, at, uh, and so in achutas uh, so he, in his character like we clearly see that he's he goes to cheat also like to cheat manu uh, because he's getting more and more benefits out of it because he's he's being in good terms in somebody else's books where he is getting more benefit right uh, because he's buying new cars and all so that that part is nicely nicely done because in the starting only they go and they're, they're looking for flats you so you show that like why why can't we go and see the flat uh, 3 bhk flat or not yeah. so uh and uh, uh the other the other thing that i actually loved in, loved in the film is how you uh, write your film along like you shot your film with transitions like so was that in the script as well because uh, because you write to edit it like and the way it's shot and the way it's uh, cut especially in the climax portion it's, it's pretty evident and there are many other places as well throughout the film uh, i sort of see the film in my head in a in 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 a certain way so when i'm preparing for shoot i always when i'm starting the scene i always have a you know a landing shot like an opening shot and an ending shot and i know how the scene should start and how the scene should end and my screenplay is very very edit heavy like very edit rhythm heavy so i edit while i am writing itself so there is a like the cut points are sort of decided that you know he's going to uh you know i'm going he's going to sentence him and then the door is going to open uh and then you walk, he he walks out wearing white so that w- was not something that happened at the edit table that happens at a screenplay level itself so a lot of times when i'm writing uh you know the edit in terms of like for example even even things like in the opening scene uh, where sort of he says you know second hand all the car to owner when i buy the car in second hand uh the next cut is she is sitting outside and she's looking outside the car and she looks grumpy right, right. so uh, th- that was a that was also uh, you know sort of like an edit call when i uh, when i'm shooting i sort of take those calls as well so a lot of stuff is written during edit itself which makes makes uh, shooting it a certain uh, a certain it gives me a certain rhythm and also it helps staging the scenes in a certain way uh with regard to uh, you know how i go about uh, making the film i'm i i kind of got lost i don't know what your question was i was talking about how the, how you wrote your transitions into the film ha ah, yeah so uh, yeah. with regard to the transitions yeah with regard to the transitions i because i am very particular about how the scene starts and how it ends i always sort of try and see if i can work in a transition but for me the thing with transitions is it's there's a certain uh, uh anger and arrogance also to it in the sense that today instagram and tiktok everybody is doing transitions doing transition is like it's like a cool thing anybody can do transitions but the point is doing a transition with an emotional arc is not something that a software can teach you is not something that the algorithm of tiktok or instagram can do so for me i like i like doing the transitions uh with a certain emotional arc you know like there has to be a kind of like for example when she's standing on top of the building and you know she looks up the whole transition was planned because i was trying to equate her jumping to her death to her agreeing yes. to marriage yes. so there is a strong emotional you know uh uh idea that i wanted to sort of push through that transition Yes, yes, yes. That 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 was actually very clear, and my heart actually stopped for two seconds when she <laughs> did this. So, and uh, and there is actually a narrative pattern 
to your transitions as well right so when when uh, manu is given that opportunity and when he says to achutana that i'll think about it and the next day they go to a new place they're sitting in that place and she says i'll let's wait for five more minutes and you the camera gazes on to the on to the wall and their dreams are being washed away by the water of that car you take the transition into that this all that that's so beautifully done and and when he's actually accepting that thing and he, and he argues with priya and leaves priya uh, in that in that white shot you you dissolve it onto the bars bars and him him being taken away by the police the police come and take him and there's a dissolve there and the music starts so so this all those poetic moments that poetic has been the the right adjective that is being spoken about when they are describing this film right so that this actually worked for me and it's beautiful uh, that means that means a lot because all these are things that you sort of you are editing right uh, you are sitting in a dark room uh, for hours together you know alone and uh, you are just you are just doing these things and just checking and uh, you, you keep wondering there's a voice in your head that is like who is going to see this who is going to watch this so it's always it's always nice to hear somebody picking up on these things it's it's very nice and with regard to that particular shot of uh, where priya and manu are sitting in the room and the camera moves away to the wall and the thing being washed away actually my initial idea was that it's the car that has caused the accident so i wanted some blood so when right, the car right, is right. being washed i wanted the blood to you know but the thing is we are shooting at night and it would be impractical for the blood to uh you know it would it would look very fake colorful <laughs> uh, it, it would look like tomato juice so the, the blood thing blood idea didn't work because for me the idea was it's a blue wall i had gotten that wall painted blue uh intentionally so when the camera pans uh, i wanted the when the dissolve happens i wanted the water cup blood uh, to like be like a small red thing on the blue wall uh the idea didn't quite work out and sometimes it's it's good that it doesn't work out <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like yeah. do you also think about the music while you're writing like writing the transitions i i create a playlist uh, i'm one of those people who create a playlist for everything even when i have to you know go out for a walk or go out on a holiday or whatever there will be one playlist i make a playlist for everything so when i'm writing there's a specific playlist that i make and i keep constantly keep listening to it and uh and and i write with that running in the background so it just helps me to get into that mood so it is not i don't write to a specific specific music it's like a excuse me the playlist is on shuffle and it keeps playing randomly so there'll be some 80 90 songs that will keep playing in in in, in a certain loop so i write uh, with that in mind so it's not specifically written to uh, you know uh, to a certain music piece so ha, like uh, like one more thing right. that like when manu and priya they meet for the first time in jail so there is a lot of chaos happening and in, in background we see that the clock is ticking fast like you, we see that we hear that the clock the is faster but when they meet the noise goes away and you actually slow down the clock like it's 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 uh, the time has slowed down between them uh, so all of these so all of these come at like when you're mixing the film and all right uh, no, no, so no. this was this was this was uh, when i was shooting the film itself when uh, there's a reason why the uh, where why rukmini was uh, specifically instructed to constantly look at a watch because i had the sound design idea again uh, i i love using sound as an element of storytelling so when i am writing the script itself along with the edit notes there will be a sound uh, mm-hmm. treatment of the film that is worked in like uh, very specifically when uh, when for example he presses the tape uh, i was very clear that all the factory sounds will you know will will switch off uh, i wanted like i had that design now design idea in terms of uh, how the script is written has to where the sound has to uh, where the sound design has to take take over like for example uh, you know in the scene where she is sitting in the bus and listening to music uh, he comes and snatches the music away from her ears and then it descends to chaos so i wanted the 
transition from a very calm musical space to a uh, very chaotic space that was also like a sound design element so similarly there are a lot of such sound design elements and this particular piece with regard to going uh, to the visiting room was something that i had in mind uh, while i was writing itself so which is why the actor constantly is she's looking at the watch constantly because i wanted to create that tak 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 sound and then slow it down because uh sometimes what happens is when you are researching for the film you come across elements of the story which just gives you a new perspective so when i went to prison to uh, to central jail uh one this scene came out from this journey uh from from this experience of going to the prison because in a car i drove down to the uh, central jail in bangalore it took me 1 hour 40 minutes to get there to get inside the prison so that is when i realized this girl if she has to come see this boy on on you know she at least had to catch two buses so it is like her entire day's work you know so that but she is doing all of this to spend two minutes with him so the idea of time the dilation of time came from there from right. came from that realization that you know somebody would have to go the entire day to meet somebody for 2 minutes so how do i then quantify that into a script into a scene so that's how that scene was written basically right and this is again right. like like the scene uh, has a payoff and the jailmate so he says that i see love in rukmini's eyes but my wife comes because she has to come because of the society yeah 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 again like, beautiful comparison yeah uh, great pay off and the way you begin that the first time rukmi uh, uh, priya is going to going to visit the jail as well right so she assumes that this can be done easily and she is happy and looking at her watch and uh, thinking that i can i can do this journey in time yeah. but yeah. you increase the pace of your edit and yeah. the, and the tension in the scene with and and the time is going on so that's that's beautifully done and also i did not realize it this before but them when they are when they are together and speaking across the across the fence the other sounds are shut down so you do this for the first time and the rest of the times you don't do this because for them it is established they are only yeah. speaking in their word but when the mother comes and tries to say at least at least a word it is so much chaos that she is not able to speak properly so she has to shout, shout. so yeah. when that yeah. scene happened okay i realized it actually they are actually shouting and like speaking in their own world so that was uh, well done so yeah good to see that no i i i wanted to create a certain unique treatment like when you are doing this you are you are constantly questioning yourself you know like uh, first time you have showed them uh, screaming and there's so much noise so second time you are treating the scene should we treat it with the same kind of you know noise around so this was the, uh, mr radhakrishnan sir who's done the sound mix who is an absolute genius he is like the amount of value add that he does to sound and the experience the theatrical experience of a film is and it's a very misunderstood art form it's a very you know people don't realize what it is because sound is a very transient experience so he uh, i i i was like sir should we treat this with the same impact of sound uh so because i was a little confused about it and he was like no no it's it's we have established it there so we don't have to repeatedly do it so right. then he was like yeah it makes sense to do it for the mother because for her it is the first time so we'll treat it with with chaos so it it right. came like that the idea sort of we we i sort of stumbled on the idea that way right right very i think like the last 30 minutes also the sound is like plays a very crucial part yeah. when you're editing yeah. Um, yeah. and it's it's just beautiful that last the table i mean it is beautifully chaotic that is what i would say <laughs> yeah i i i keep i i keep equating uh, you know right from the beginning of the film right from narration to the actors to the technical team one thing that i always mentioned is that you know as a kid i used to watch a lot of f1 i still do and i used to be i used to watch it for the crashes like for the Drama. crazy you know drama of cars flying and but as i grew older and you know when when arjun sena passed away uh, i was like wow somebody died you know it was so 
you start realizing that something that is so beautiful the destruction the slow motion of something breaking apart is deeply traumatic for somebody who is experiencing it but it can look beautiful that juxtaposition itself is very interesting mm-hmm. so for me the breaking of a relationship of something that is so beautiful that is so intense uh the treating it of in a very beautiful way in a very aesthetically designed way seemed like a very interesting idea because you it's like it's confusing right you're watching something very aesthetic something very it's like it should look beautiful but it is at the same time very intense in you know intense and very heartbreaking so uh that was the basic design prem- premise for it yeah i think it right. like it paid off really well we can see that so like right from uh so there is one shot yeah right from when she when she attempts to say from that we continuously see transitions like for last yeah, 23 yeah. 25 minutes uh yeah so i want to talk about two more characters one is that uh, evil guy in the jail uh, so he's a guy so so he is like first of all kudos to that actor like for the first time when i saw i somehow sensed that this guy will going do some shit in the story like i think that is that comes from the way he just eats his pan like in the first shot <laughs> smile <laughs> yeah the smile yeah i mean brilliant i mean brilliantly done uh, uh, his name so, is ramesh indra is a terrific uh, actor he is also a director he has directed a very popular film i mean a film that did really well called premia padmu okay okay yeah okay yeah i think we are unaware so <laughs> apologies for that but yeah he uh, there is also a nice trivia about him he is the guy who is in kgf the guy who is lying down the guy who dies because of which the chaos happens all the sons start fighting he is the original father oh his face is his, <laughs> his face is never seen but he is the guy who is lying on the bed ah okay okay okay, okay. yeah so so this guy right so this guy is obsessed with the concept of god at least at that two three dialogues we see so one is one where where he takes the wall and he says uh, you look at the wall if you re- receive something i think you'll start believing in what god is and uh, the second scene where he's hitting manu uh, so he says that uh, we can't hit him more because we have our grouds on or we are mad at, at god contrary i don't think manu believes in something called god because uh, when when they go to that house so priya is the one who is doing like uh, who keep keeps an idol doing the puja and then he she just like pushes him to nudges yeah him. nudges him to uh, like to do prayer or whatever so is this like consciously written uh, no the, uh, no i mean not uh, sometimes not the comparison but in general uh, 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 so for soma's character the concept of god no no uh, it, he is he is in fact somebody who does not believe in god uh, soma he because he is he is like you know we are we are who we are and we have to he is like a very animal type of a character yeah, right yeah. so he for him morality is uh, very dubious hmm. uh, so it is not consciously written uh, for either character with regard to god but i think subconsciously when you craft uh, when you when you add so much detail to the characters uh their world views and their religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs will have some sort of shape which is very subconscious but it's not it's not consciously written by me or gundu the other uh, uh the right. my co writer we, we didn't consciously have any conversations about okay does uh, you know do they believe in uh, do they believe in god do they there are only two instances where there's a certain uh positioning of of the higher uh, higher uh, you know force in the film is when she is doing the puja to the to, to the little ganapati idol and when avinash sir is doing this puja to the giant ganapati yeah, idol ganapati uh, yeah ganapati uh, you know yeah, so that is the only place where it it sort of yeah right. and, and like uh, so one other thing i think this uh, this shown is like how jail forms an ecosystem in itself like it's like, it's like a nation in itself right Uh, where the prisoners become the lawmakers again where we we can yeah. also extrapolate it to the nation saying uh, we give the rights to policemen that they are the 
quote unquote gundas of the society there, there is no other one that is supposed to do that so that is also like you show that like uh, that uh, the soma character so he actually says that when you give a lathi to a prisoner he eventually become polis that is that that is very good very that that is that is actually a, 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 a so there's this very famous experiment called the stanford prison experiment mm-hmm. where it was uh, if you read up about it it's very interesting where they did a they were trying to figure out why certain behave people behave certain way and can can morality be conditioned by the environment that you're in like i think if i if i if i remember correctly i think the origin is trying to find out why so many german people sided with cruelty towards Hitler. jews during world war uh and why they were uh, okay doing you know such ghastly acts so the stanford prison experiment was done to sort of show uh, they created a mock scenario where they put some people inside prison and some people as guards and in a very few in a very few uh, days the guards started behaving like real guards uh they started using authority and started policing them you know for real so it 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 led to people getting hospitalized it it it, it was one of those really uh, psychological experiments that went wrong so that idea for me of using uh, you know uh, that in the writing was basically stems from there because i mm-hmm. wanted to it is a it is a fact of life if you give somebody authority the chance of them it's like with power comes responsibility right you, you rarely does it is it a good combination so uh, <laughs> that's that's how that was the yes. uh, that was the thinking behind that okay so i right. i'll ask one more question on the same same lines uh, so so do you think as a society at large or as people pe- people's people in in large as a group so do we think do you think objective morality is something that exists uh about objective morality exists i think about fundamental issues uh things like you know loss of life uh and stuff like that objective morality exists but i think everything else is very subjective morality especially things like way of living and way of life mm-hmm. like my what what is moral living to me might not be moral living to you and mm-hmm. that it is beautiful that it is that way and i think it's a good society when objective morality is confined to a few things only hmm. and not many things when you start defining right. objective morality at a very larger context for a larger set of people and say all of you should have these many moral values i think it's it's projection of morality i think that becomes a very difficult way of life right right i think yeah I, right right very yeah right. very interesting answer <laughs> right yeah, yeah. so uh, slightly deviating from uh, morality to being in a prison and to a film called shoshang Redem- shoshang redemption so in that film uh, so what so it's it's based of a of a novel so i'm just quoting what uh, the novel says so hope is a good thing maybe the best of all things and no good thing ever dies so this is what stephen king the novel the, the person who wrote the novel says and here when soma is actually giving a class to uh, mr manu who just has just entered the prison he says you get you will you tend to get a lot of dreams in this prison about the outside world be careful about that so what do you think what do, what is your opinion about having hope and living your life and people doing mistakes and then correcting so what is what is your take on that see the the thing that the thing that is very interesting is that mr king i am a huge huge fan of stephen king uh he is one of my favorite writers but uh, the thing about stephen king is that when a good person talks about hope hope is the most beautiful thing <laughs> right right <laughs> when 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 hope is being used as a manipulating tool it is the most dangerous thing that is the nature of hope right. hope in the hands of somebody right innocent is a extremely powerful weapon hope in the hands of somebody who is a manipulator is a extremely dangerous weapon so hope is like two sides of a coin it is equally beautiful and equally ugly right, right. actually we see we see this contrast in soma's behavior with manu right because yeah. he has some hope yes. like he'll get some ulterior yeah. motive he behaves in a certain way yeah. 
and then yeah. when he when he sees that she, right it's yeah. very interesting yeah 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 true it, it makes a lot of sense to all the characters actually you can apply this to, to every character in the film yeah. and then see how, i think with manu how, also he's like he's hoping that he'll build up house yeah. so the, the hope is ideally very good but i don't so, think yeah. like, after coming out of the jail i don't think he has any hope left that is why side b has that kind of uh, teaser cut no i <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't say he has no hope left there is hope <laughs> there's always hope <laughs> so you, the thing about human human beings right this is what i i very strongly believe even it's it's hope is so intertwined with our survival instinct if you have life you will have hope yeah you know it's it's i think the day right. it's, it's very it's it's not possible to live without hope somewhere right. it will be there so let me so the the guy who dies in the prison like i think you in one of your interviews you said that you want him to be a parallel to manu where some part Correct. of manu died in that prison at, at that point because of the atrocities that he seen so that guy has lost hope right that is the reason why yeah uh, in the sense that uh, he uh, he's not able to take like the loss of innocence is what i wanted to show using that character there is a certain you know uh, breaking of manu that happens and i wanted to show that character uh, uh, i wanted to show that through another character and mm-hmm. that's how that character uh, uh, sort of loses hope and decides to end his own life right Right. right and i and i was observing today that in side a we don't see manu smoking a lot but in the teasers we see a lot of shots where manu is smoking uh, so that contrast also i observe uh, like uh, we Very won't good. go much into side b because uh, we i want to watch it on the big screen only i don't <laughs> want like i'm not even thinking about that like i'm still stuck at why the characters in side a behave like that uh, yeah there, you, you there is think. there is you will you will uh you will there is a very specific reason why i chose manu uh to be seen doing slightly destructive things inside b there's okay. a right there there is a particular right. reason for it and i think it's better to talk about right. it but it's I'm, i'm very happy that you noticed it i'm like that's uh, it just makes me very happy <laughs> right uh, so in 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 one of your interviews you said that uh, there is a story behind behind every eyes this set of eyes right so i actually noticed this when uh, when there is this montage of shots where manu is just opening randomly opening doors and closing doors for the rich people and he's like he's very unhappy with with his life and that is actually also driving him to for for the social mobility right that for that uh, asha so like uh, hope to be to have a better life and very conveniently in any film when we see a widow we assume that there is no story there and oh so poor woman uh, her husband died we just assume it and we just get away get along with the story of other characters but you bring her character into that scene in second half where priya is wailing and confessing to her mother saying that i can't take this there is so much pain and you quote uh, and you say that uh, and her mother says uh, grief is like a mountain and th- that that will stay as long as you live and you just have to keep keep up with it so what were you referring to sisyphus and the boulder where he has to roll that boulder up the hill and and he has to do that until he dies or something like that because that is what that's the parallel drew but no 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 i was not it's it's nothing to do with sisyphus but uh, although i attribute filmmaking to uh, <laughs> every film is like pushing a boulder <laughs> it's like you are you know pushing a boulder up to the top of the hill uh so uh, no but uh, coming back to what grief is like a mountain i think it's just a uh, you know i wanted a, it, it it was not a reference to sisyphus at all uh, but it was more to do with the fact that it it just stays it can't go anywhere it will always be part of your life okay. and when you when you see somebody uh lose something very precious uh or when you lose something precious it's it's something that takes up a lot of space in your in your mind and heart so uh that was written from there actually hmm. right i think i like pavitra garu is like such a brilliant performer like we have seen her oh, multiple yeah. times in telugu films i think 
her eyes just communicate the motherly nature uh, brilliant no she is she is fabulous like uh, you know the it's like sometimes when as a writer and a director when you work with actors right when you work with great actors uh when they add life to your lines it's like you you you're like this line is so dumb you know this line is so like why grief is like a mountain what the fuck you know like you're you're like that in your head but when somebody like her comes and performs it you're like wow what a line you know uh, so it's it's the actors man i always say this it's always the actors who uh, make all of this you know they they are the life to 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 the words that we write so it's, it's everything that they do ultimately it's actually true uh, true because true. seeing at priya's character i mean rukmini his performance i was blown away like with just her i don't know like she was like i did not see her any previous work but i was just blown away by whatever she was doing like her little nuances and one special shot i forgot to mention was like uh, in the climax uh, when the tape recorder again plays and uh, like the line comes that the thing i miss the most is uh, like the small small things that we do and you show like uh, he's massaging her legs uh, she is singing and and i think at some point uh, the relationship in any given relationship at some point it evolves to a stage where you like others daily activities like more than the special thing you like the rot- routine of it and that is what you show and like that is again one of my most heartbreak scenes where you show you intercut to that three four shots where they're doing that routine thing they're happily they're like enjoying each other's company not doing anything special not going out not going there there there's comfort of their homes doing what what they like so in that scene we see rukmini's like eyes and all she's she's very vulnerable she's very sweet all, like yeah. so brilliant performance again by her i mean i was completely blown away seeing her <laughs> yeah no she uh, she is just fabulous like uh, the like i said right <laughs> it's the it's all the actors ultimately but uh, the uh, nuance in terms of the small 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 things that she has done uh, in many scenes like it's just uh, when it's happening your when when i'm looking at it first time in the monitor i am like wow you know i myself am like wow so uh, same same with rakshit i mean there are so many play, places where i have seen the performance and i am like this is incredible like what just happened you know uh, so it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing when that happens on set yeah right like rakshit i mean we so so we know him right like we we saw a bunch of stuff but rukmini i was like like the screen presence of rukmini i felt that i mean because there is some something special going on like when when she was on screen mm-hmm. yeah i it's crazy like yeah brilliantly then i mean like I, I, i was i was in awe of what how she how priya was looking on screen how rukmini portrayed priya on screen mm-hmm. so that stayed with me and i uh, i just i'm just curious about how you would direct people direct your actors at that particular point so for example from you just said that how so grief is a mountain so that line for you is nothing like it's like it's not hitting it right hitting at the right chord but when you direct your actors and when they bring that soul into it so how does this process happen for you because you also said the film was not entirely shot linearly and and when there are emotional scenes that that had to be shot earlier and there is a lot of baggage that these char- characters have to carry from from the film that is going to be short, short later so how did how does this happen for you and with it so i i don't i don't uh, i i'm not uh, i am not a very i don't act and show what the actor should do that is i just do not right believe that is good direction because i feel it is very limiting to the actor if you start acting and showing them i am a terrible actor to begin with it's not my job i hire good actors so that they can you know add life to the lines that have been written so uh i don't i never act and show but i'm i'm very uh i i think i try and be very precise in my communication with them uh very as clear in my communication with them because i i feel good actors rely on information that is very precise so if you like if if 
you and you with good actors and great actors you don't need to do too much you just have to like you know uh, like for example there is a scene uh, in the film uh, where uh, you know where uh, manu says uh, income tax uh, tax kodbeko yes. so the uh, there is a certain performance there is a certain vulnerability there is a certain emotion that rupni is adding but where i would add the direction is that you know when you're leaning in just look around a little bit because right, that's a very right, right 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 that's what a girl would do right? Uh, right a guy probably wouldn't do that but a girl would do that so that is the note that i would give her uh similarly you know uh, like for example when you're walking through a crowd uh, there's a certain natural common sense to it right so those are kind of notes that i would uh, factor in and with regard to uh, 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 that particular scene with with regard to uh, uh, pavitra ma'am the thing that i sort of communicated to her is that she irrespective of how old a child grows for the mother for the parent the kid is always the kid right so she is coming to you as a little kid now yes she spoke to you like an adult mm. in the previous yes. scene where she's talking back to you but here she is that little girl who is who's lost a toy who has lost something who somebody shouted at school and it's so i wanted that information to go to her and once that information went so the the maternal instinct sort of treatment of the scene is how she performed it and you know even for rukmini it was uh, the information that i gave 90% of it is there in the script the other 10% is the you know this communication where i articulate and say you know this is what i this is the space this is how vulnerable you need to be and you know that is how i like to direct them i don't like to sort of be very rigid because you have right. to give them sort of space to like like you you give time to a cinematographer to like the scene right so similarly you have to give space to the actors right. to sort of interpret the scene uh and that's how it it happens right 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 yeah. i think uh, manoj one, one of my one favorite shirt i just i just have to mention yeah, right. about before it before sandy makes his point so there is a split diopter shirt you put on manu's face and uh, priya's reaction in the in the court so uh, i mean i actually love when there are split diopter shots in in the films so kudos to that so i just want to mention no that. that's it's all it's all down to my uh, dop uh, otherwise because it was his uh, he was he's always looking to do he's looking to do something interesting so when we started uh, when we decided to shoot with anamorphic he was like we'll get split diopters and uh, you know it will it'll be very interesting so i i obviously know how split diopters were you know how it is used like famously used in star wars so i was like it'll be very True. interesting we didn't know where to use it so <laughs> okay. we were like let's have it on set somewhere uh, we will need diopters uh, anyways because we need when we shoot ultra close we'll need diopters so split diopter he had anyways asked so we it was not like a planned shot before shoot saying okay here we are going to use a split diopter right you are like where to use where to use it's been so many days we have not used it okay let's use it here it, <laughs> it was one of those things <laughs> but yeah neatly done neatly done yeah sandy you were saying i think i think manoj bajpay in one of his interviews says that um like for a particular role so he go like he was like he read the script multiple times so he was doing all of his homework and at some point in the shooting like he was not eating for like he had to become thin and all he was not eating and stuff uh, so one day he went to his director and says that i think we'll have to stop the movie for about one two weeks because i don't think i'm all right and then the movie actually stops or something and he 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 goes to a psychiatrist to come out of that thing like to come out of that character uh, because like It, like mentally he was going crazy i so he basically goes to the director and says that i think i'm going mad actually i'm actually going mad uh, so i mean that is like some next level of process that he was doing which is like very like it takes a toll on the actor's body also i think physically and mentally. no it does and 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 see we uh, when we did workshops with uh, with rukmini and rachit the very beginning of the film i uh, we did we did a specific element in the workshop where i had sort of created a, a aspect of the workshop just for them to disconnect from the characters that they play mm-hmm. because 
I feel very responsible. I'm very protective of my actors. And because I know how difficult a job it is uh, for them to go play a role, to be so vulnerable on screen and then switch off and go home and right. have a separate life. It's not easy. So I had, uh, uh, we did a workshop where we made Rakshit answer a set of questions as Rakshit and then as Manu. And wow. where, where we made Priya, uh, where Rukmini answered a set of questions as Rukmini and then as Priya. So that mm. there is a clear understanding of who the character is and who Priya is. Like I wanted them to sort of make that conscious separation so that it becomes easier to get to work and switch on and switch off mm -hmm. uh, if they have this sort of moral, uh, if they have this compass in their head. So I felt it is it is something that I, I mean, I like to do that for my actors because uh, actors can just get lost otherwise. You know, uh, I, 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 they have each of them have their own process, but I feel it is important to, you know, sort of assist wherever possible. But how, how right. as writer or director, you do the same thing, Un unwind from the characters? I, I can't. I'm for the. I don't have that luxury, and it's, it's a huge. For me, the day of the release is where I actually feel a huge sigh of relief because I'm done. I it's out of my system. I don't I don't care as much about it as I used to till the release. It's no longer my film in the sense that it is no longer only my burden. Now everybody else has an own opinion, has an own space for that film in their hearts, and that's it. You know, I <laughs> it's out of me. So during the course of the film, I am I carry it with me like it's my baby, and after that I'm like, okay, it's up for adopts, and all of you, please take good care of it. But thus, I mean, like what, like whatever you're doing, let's say you're driving a car, some thread on back of your head will will be running, right? Always, always. It's like, very until the release of the film, it's it's always, and it 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 takes a toll on your personal life as well because you are you're always thinking about it, and you're always like getting lost and you know uh, your, your partner is saying something to you and you'll be like somewhere else it's not always an ideal scenario so right. yeah it's it is it is challenging right so i mean that that's what i'm trying to understand because uh, a short while ago we spoke to mr nitin krishna murthy murthy who made hostel rudgar bakery there he, and he said uh, when we asked a question a question to him he said uh, i don't know what i would do but the character in the film would do so and so things so how do you operate? So you are the character, or you uh, see as your as a as a gazer looking at the characters. How does that work for you in your head? Uh, in the sense that we, uh, I uh, sort of have to understand the character's point of view uh, regularly. Like I have to understand what what centers Priya, what centers Manu, what centers Soma, what centers Achutana, and constantly shift perspectives and. When I'm writing those characters, I have to become those characters in the sense that mm -hmm. not body language wise, but mentally, psychologically, I have to think from their perspective. I have to look at it where they feel their center of the world. So I I end up becoming, you know, it's uh, going into the, that mind space. So All right. it is it is uh, it is acting in that sense. Yeah, right. Understood. Right. All right. I think uh, we have took like 20 minutes extra of your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. No, I, I would love to I love to continue and talk. It's just I have side B post-production work <laughs> <laughs> that I have to do. So a lot of work left. We are working for, uh, you know, we are working for a, a good release and making sure that everything is in place. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think hopefully understandable, will... of course. We will connect again after side B. So, like before leaving, I just want to ask, like, what did you expect coming into this conversation, and like, what are your thoughts after the conversation? No, to be very honest, I didn't expect. I did. I didn't have any expectations. I just, uh, you know, you guys reached out, and uh, it's always nice to talk to. Uh, I'm. I'm. When I'm not doing a film, I don't. I'm. I don't have any social media presence. I don't have any. You know, I, you don't see me doing any interviews. It's just that you know when the film is is it, it, it's a discussion about the film and when somebody wants to discuss the film it's like a nice nice conversation to be part of so i just uh, i'm just glad uh, that you guys love the film and you know 
saw uh, you know it, it made sense for you guys to have this conversation so i'm happy to have you know uh, to be part of it and i quite enjoyed the conversation i quite enjoyed the fact that you picked on so many interesting points and you know that that it scared you that you it, i didn't uh, you know that was it was nice to hear all those things and it's nice because yeah, you guys are not native kannada speakers you are you know uh, your telugu audience so the fact that the film is travel to the telugu audience and they are watching it and they are having a good responses is very flat you know is is like a, uh, it's it's a huge compliment to us as a as a team so thank you for you know having me i enjoyed it thank uh, thank you for your time thank, thank you, you. Yeah, we already thanks. took a lot lot of your time <laughs> and hopefully we would want to do this when side b comes out and uh, eagerly looking forward to side b as well yes super i can't wait <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much thank you yeah cheers guys bye yes bye bye